finally this package arrived, which everyone was eagerly anticipating, including myself. Apparently the sender didn't trust their post service, so they wrote fragile just in case. So what do we have here? Glass from a strategic Soviet bomber. It's quite impressive in size, especially its thickness. There are engravings and inscriptions in many places. Perhaps these are marks of some military acceptance. Maybe someone with aviation knowledge can decipher them? Let us know in the comments. For those who don't know what a strategic bomber is, let me explain. It's a military aircraft whose task, if necessary, is to make a state or several states completely uninhabitable for decades or even centuries, or some small Western European country. This glass is presumably from either from here or here. Now let's measure its thickness, almost 12 centimeters. Despite its enormous thickness, it still maintains good transparency. However, I don't know if it makes sense to remove this aluminium frame around the glass unit. I mean, here probably not only these screws hold it, but also some sealant. And I think it won't affect the glass's strength, whether it's under the press, with the frame or without it. We've already tried to crush armored glass with a 100-ton press. It was armored glass from a military armored vehicle, rated at the fourth level of ballistic protection. It was designed to withstand AK-47 gunfire. Here's how it looked. Its thickness was over four centimeters. And this is how it compares to the armored glass from an aircraft. By the way, this piece of glass weighs almost 50 kilograms. I wonder if it would withstand a .50 caliber impact. I think it would. The thing is, .50 caliber rounds aren't fired at planes. .50 caliber cannot reach such altitudes. These planes fly at an altitude of over 10 kilometers. And clearly, they are designed for a larger calibers. This gives a clear idea of the thickness of this glass. This is how it looks next to the strength reference. I think it's pointless to attempt with this attachment. Better to use one with a smaller contact area. It will have better impact force. We'll even take a new attachment for this case. It's right after the heat treatment. Well, everything seems ready. Let's get started. Not bad. This glass withstood the entire 100-ton load applied to it. There's only a slight dent left on the glass. Now let's try pressing on the same spot again. On the second attempt, you can see some damage appearing. However, these damages are not on the top layer, but on the middle layers for some reason. Let's try pushing a Soviet ball bearing into it.
only with a force of 100 tons, we managed to push this ball bearing there, barely. And still, it didn't pierce the glass, it only reached about halfway. Beyond that, the attachment got stuck in the glass. If you listen carefully, you can hear the tension the glass is under right now. It's constantly cracking. Initially, I couldn't understand why the top layer cracked into large pieces while the lower layers into small ones. But then it dawned on me. Apparently, we placed the glass upside down. So this upper part of the glass is the inner side of the aircraft cabin. And the lower part is the outer side of the aircraft. Now, let's finish this glass with the cone. I believe the cone should definitely pierce it. There isn't a single item in the entire history of our channel that has stopped the cone. It seems the question about the glass frame has resolved itself. Here comes the ball. Now, let's try to pry open this frame a bit and get some larger piece of glass. We'll examine how it's constructed and what it consists of. This top layer is the layer facing the aircraft cabin. It resembles not glass, but polycarbonate or plexiglass or some kind of plastic. Its task is to protect against shards. Here you can already see the number of layers that make up this glass unit. I counted five layers here. Each layer has thickness of over two centimeters. In this package, the layers are very thick, unlike automotive bulletproof glass. Automotive bulletproof glass sometimes have roughly the same thickness for the entire unit. But there are many layers, maybe more than 10 even. However, all these layers have a much smaller thickness than this glass. So, finally, let's still try to break this glass with the cone, but this time from the correct side, from the outside. Just as I thought, it wasn't crucial for the press which side to pierce. 